Okay, welcome. We are working on the EverFi task worksheet. Okay, or not EverFi, sorry, can I survive on my own task worksheet? So we went over our bell ringer and we are now in Canvas. We opened up the worksheet from yesterday and we are working on um, task four, five, and eight today on that project, which you can find in module 11. So we did one, two, and three yesterday. We reviewed those. If you need help with those, go back and see yesterday's video. And then today we're going to work on four, five, and eight. So number four is asking you to visit this website and make a list of 10 to 15 things that you would need to shop for. So remember number three was things that you could get from your house that maybe parents or family members would be willing to give you um, that you wouldn't have to go buy. And then this list is now to start establishing what do you actually need to go out and purchase. So it could be furniture, kitchen items, bathroom items. So go to this website. It can be super helpful and create a list of, again, about 10 to 15 things. So for example, like dining table and chairs, bath towels, bath mats, food, seasoning for food, um, vacuum cleaner, dishwasher soap, laundry detergent, just 10 to 15 things. So I'll give about one more minute to work on this and then we'll move on to task five. Okay, give me a thumbs up if you got your 10 to 15 things or thumbs down if you need a little bit more time. Let me know how we're doing. Are we good or do we do we need a little bit more time? Okay, yeah, there's so many things, right? So, I mean, you could make five different lists with 10 things on it, you know, or 15 things, okay? So if you have a few left, come back and get that done um, a little bit later. Again, you only need 10. Um, you can combine some things if you want to. You're welcome to kind of, you know, pull from this list if you want to, or that website obviously can be really helpful. And you can find that link on the Can I Survive page or in the chat. Let's take a look at task five. Okay, so task five says, what does rent stand for? What advice is most practical uh, for you to follow? Okay, so we're going to watch a short video right here. We're going to watch a short video where they go over um, you know, some tips for renting, some mistakes that people can make sometimes when they're renting, um, some things to kind of avoid, um, and then we'll fill that out. Okay, so let's pay attention and I'll put notes in the chat that will help us out. A popular time to move to a new place to live is between June and October, which means many people are planning on getting into a new home, maybe a new apartment, and a lot of them will be renting. If you were one of them, hold on. Corey Peterson is here to tell you what four mistakes you should be avoiding before you actually go and sign that lease. And Corey, you're an Arizona guy. Yeah, yeah, I love it here. And so you know kind of uh, what we deal with here. First hand, first hand, I yeah. know the summer's coming. Yes. <laughs> and so if we have four mistakes, why, you know, of course we wanna know what these four mistakes are and you know, why do we need these four mistakes? Are people making them a lot? Yeah, sure, and I, honestly, I don't think they know about them. So the challenge is, is if you're going out to rent a, a home or apartment, you know, um, no one's gonna tell you these things, but because I do, I, I wanna share them with you. So like yeah. the first mistake that you really should avoid is to pay full asking price. Oh. Right, and a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, is that true? Was you can you negotiate the rent? Well, of course you can. You can negotiate. Everything is negotiable in life, yeah. and you know, as an I apartment homeowner myself, what I'm looking for is perfect tenants. Right. Right. So I'm willing to accept less rent each and every month so I can get a perfect tenant. Mm -hmm. And so you know, all you have to do is ask. Everything in life is negotiable. So the second thing that you, I think you should avoid is to assume that the unit you looked at is the one you're going to get. This is a very common bait and switch technique where these leasing agents will show you this a unit that looks amazing, right? It has all the bells and whistles, but they assign you a totally different unit and it may not even be ready yet. So if it's not on the lease, chances are it's not going to be the unit you're going to get. Can you ask to see the exact unit? Yes, you absolutely should ask because okay. it can be totally different. 
Interesting. I yeah. didn't know that one either. What's our third mistake? The thing, third thing is to not look at the crime index. You yeah. know, every person is going to tell you, hey, this area is safe. But wouldn't you like to know? Yes. So we use a website called clrsearch.com, and it's where you can get a lot of crime index data and really overall demographics data of what's going on in the neighborhood. So it's really important that you know. Um, and then the last thing is really just to avoid moving from that June 1st to October 31st window. Which is when a lot of people move. Yeah, that's moving season. Yeah. And that's when you're going to be competing with all the other renters and all the other moving services. Yeah. So it could get very expensive. And so, you know, we talked about the things to avoid, right? Yeah. Let's talk about how to rent successfully. Okay. R, research the area, right? Yeah. E, get exact details on the lease. Know what unit you're going to get, right? Yeah. Um, also, uh, N, negotiate. Get that accent wall painted. Uh, you know, negotiate the rent and get hundreds of dollars off. Yeah, right? I like that one. <laughs> of course. Tea, being time. Yeah, you know, know where you're at when you're moving. So the time of the year, because yep. honestly, if you can move like this January, December, November, somewhere in there, you're gonna have a lot more opportunities to negotiate really good in your favor. Now, the reason you have all these great things to do, not to do, is because you're coming from both sides. Kind of tell me, you know, where you have started and where you yeah, are today. Sure. Lots of good tips here. Um, and Missy you were chiming in too. Yeah, so research the area, you know, check the crime. Is there, you know, is there a, a neighboring area maybe that's a little bit better, you know, and stuff like that. You can't avoid all crime, but, you know, do your due diligence. Um, and stuff like that, because sometimes it's deceiving. Um, make sure there's a grocery store nearby, the, the basic amenities that you need. Um, are you going to be walking, riding a bus, uh, you know, driving, you know, and, and is it close um, and stuff? Look at the exact details in that lease, right? So, um, you know, making sure is there a penalty for this and that? What am I responsible for? And um, what are they responsible for? Um, if I have to terminate the lease, what are those terms? You know, so making sure you're really looking closely at the details. And when you look at the unit, this happened to me when I moved here actually in 07. So they had like a model unit in the apartment complex where I lived. And then they would just, they always had that vacant. That's what they would show people. And it turned out that the other unit I moved into didn't have as much paint, didn't have as nice a flooring. So definitely ask if it's the same unit or a different unit or what the differences are. Go ahead, Missy. But all of this is irrelevant if you blow your credit, you blow your leverage. So you don't have any negotiating power and nobody cares what you think if you have a bad credit score. Yeah. Keep your credit score up. Yes. Yes. And then that gets to end negotiate the rent or incentives. I don't really know how negotiable rent is right now because it's so competitive and stuff. But I do know sometimes if you can't negotiate the rent incentives. So especially in a bigger complex, sometimes maybe you could get half month or half off the first month's rent if you sign a year's lease. Don't sign a year lease unless you can actually stay a year because you will pay through the nose if you leave early. Um, sometimes maybe getting extra features. So I did this one time, I, I was able to get a wall painted. Um, I got a newer washer dryer in my unit. So sometimes you can't necessarily negotiate the rent. If you can, awesome. But if you can't, sometimes you can get incentives or upgrades. One time when I re-signed a lease um, before I bought my house, um, I was able to get a garage included in like with the unit, which usually would have been like an extra hundred dollars a month. So sometimes you can negotiate things that save you money or are like getting better rent. Um, How was your credit score at that time? Pardon? How was your credit score when you were negotiating? I've always had a good credit score. Yeah. yeah I've always, had, good score. I just, I've I'm always had a good credit score. So that's the key. Reason. Pay your bills on time. Yes. Pay your bills on time. Um, because if you pay on time, then they are more likely to want to keep you. So when it's time to re-sign a lease, they're more likely to negotiate with you. Um, I have a rental property and we had a tenant like that. So paid on time, excellent. And so if we were going to keep it the same, they negotiated us down $100. We didn't want to lose them because they were so good. And so we did because they were such good tenants. So mm -hmm. sometimes that track record um, can be really helpful because um, you do. He's right. You want you know, they want a good deal, but you also want people that are, you know, trustworthy there. And then moving off season, that's actually a really good point where you actually might be able to negotiate better. When you move during the hot season, there's more competition. They don't have to negotiate with you because they can just get somebody else, right? You don't want to do it. I'll get somebody else. Move in the off season, actually November, December during the mm -hmm. holidays. I know it's the worst time to move, but landlords are desperate for renters or are harder to come by. And so you would have more negotiation um, possibly. So that those can kind of go hand in hand. So good things to think about. 
um, and stuff. So in number five, what you need to do, you need to outline what rent means, R-E-N-T, okay? And I've put it there in the chat, so you're welcome to use that, or you can use do your own definition. So research the area, um, you know, make sure you look at the exact details of the unit and the paperwork. You know, am I getting the same unit? Where is it facing? Um, things like that. You know, how long does it take to get maintenance? How long's my lease? What's my penalty if I pay late? So look at the details. Negotiate if you can. And sometimes that's incentives. Um, you know, so don't be afraid to ask for, can I get half month off if I move in or if I sign a lease today? You know, negotiate. Um, and then time of year, if you're able. Sometimes you can't avoid it. Sometimes you got to move when you got to move. But we all know June, July, August. <laughs> so hot. Mm -hmm. so for buying and selling, buy in the winter time. Don't buy in the summer. Yes, same thing too. They get rental that goes into real estate as well. Um, and then you're going to pick one thing that you think out of all the advice he gave that's really, really practical so that you would really want to make sure you pay attention to. So for me, um, when I moved here, it was crime. Um, I came from a small town in Oregon. You left your car unlocked. Like it was just, there was, it was safe, you know? So moving here, moving here, it was like, Oh my goodness. So looking at crime in the areas was really important and trying to find a place that had a little less crime was important. Um, my car still got stolen my first year, my car, I went out to go to work and it was legit gone. Yeah. It, it's funny now at the time I was like, oh. did you leave it unlocked? No, no, it was not unlocked. It was not unlocked. It just we had an old Honda Civic and they're just so easy to jack. Like they're so easy to, to steal, but I literally went out and so my husband, well, my he was my boyfriend at the time, now husband, he he had our the covered parking spot because he had a nicer car. So I would kind of hit wherever the open spots were. So I was like, wait, wait, did I park it? You know, <laughs> did I lose my car? And it was gone. I got it back a month later and it was pretty no. jacked up. So I had to get a new car. <laughs> so it happens sometimes. And it was a nice area, apartment complex. I mean, it was, you know, like young working for, I mean, it wasn't, but sometimes it happens. So yeah, no, I Mm -hmm. um back then no we we locked our door but i'm just saying like it was one of those neighborhoods like if i forgot to lock it it wasn't like you freaked out like it just it was a very safe small town in eastern oregon you know it's just just stuff didn't really i mean i'm sure it happened but it was so rare that people weren't hyper vigilant you know what i mean um you didn't get scolded you know like what were you thinking we're here it's like right what were you thinking <laughs> you know <laughs> no i did have it locked i did have it locked but Hondas are really easy, especially the old Hondas, like those and the Toyota Toyota Camrys and stuff. They were like super easy to like late nineties, early two thousand models. Mine was an O, I think it was a ninety seven. It was like ten years old. Like I said, it was my college car. It was just a. It ran great though, man. That thing was just awesome. Like ran like a machine. So, yeah, not fun. <laughs> it happens. I mean, okay. So be working on this. I'll give you about five minutes. Put in what rent means and then pick one of the four. And what do you think would, so maybe it's negotiating to you. Maybe it's, um, maybe it's making sure that you get a good lease. Um, maybe it's crime, you know, making sure that you're in an area that has all your needs. Maybe you don't have a car. So you're like, I'd be reliant on the bus and walking. So I got to make sure those amenities and safe, right? You know, if you're going to be more on foot. Um, so crime and amenities, you know, would probably be really important. Um, so what would be most important to you? My cell phone got stolen two years ago at a Target. So had it, don't leave. So I had one of those like diaper bag backpacks. And um, so I would put my cell phone in the side pocket because um, it was just easy. And my husband probably a hundred times, don't leave it there. Somebody could just come by and grab it. Don't leave it there. I mean, told me, and I just, I didn't listen. And sure enough, I checked out at Target. I went to grab my phone. I was like, oh gone and i used it in the back side of the store because i had text somebody and stuff so i you know had to go and they looked at the security camera and this woman came up behind me and just grabbed it and walked by and i didn't even you know because you're busy doing your thing people still be people still sell steal cell phones yes so so we tracked it to it got turned she she like left the store and it was like the one like here in like green valley like it was not like it was nice Great, nice one, but it, it can happen anywhere. And um, and it turned off about a, a, a block down the road. And but when I got home, I was able to like swipe, you know, clean it off and stuff like that. So at least like now you can like clear it, you know, so they don't get your info. But yep, crazy. 
I know. And then I got to hear for two months from my husband. I told you, I told you. I was like, I know, I know. I had to go get a new phone. That stinks. Ugh. So learn from my mistake. Don't leave it in like an open pocket somewhere. Like make sure it's in a closed pocket. I've never taken care of my phone, but I've always had the cheapest phone possible because I hate phones. Mm -hmm. So that might be why. Yeah. <laughs> Who wants my I, phone? I never buy the new new. Like I'll get like one or two models old, but I use them for like five, six years. So you know what I mean? Like, it's then not how like work? now you're making me feel like they can steal my raggedy phone. I don't want them to steal Although they can, they can. I, I don't know. I don't know. It was an older <laughs> iPhone, but it wasn't even like, you know, it was an eight. It wasn't like, you know. Yeah. Super. Oh, and I mean, the, and the screen was cracked. I mean, the, I had like a plexiglass thing on it, but the, it was cracked because, you know, kids and just. That's crazy. Oh so, my God. I don't know. I don't know. I'm scared. So steal a phone, Jesus. People will steal anything. Apparently. I I I nothing is too big or too small. <laughs> I just didn't I didn't think there was any value in these things anymore, but I guess there is. No, there's totally a secondhand market for them. For broken up, beat up old phones? Yeah, I guess so, huh? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Shoot. Good good thoughts. I'm glad you brought that up. I'm just saying don't leave like wallet anything in an open pocket like sure. that behind you like backpack because it's just it's easy for people to i mean i a hundred times i did it and nothing happened and, and i just one got it lucky. but the point is yeah i learned the hard way so oh, believe me i leave everything everywhere i'm a mess when it comes to taking care of things yeah no like, and like i said the, the second yeah addison there's a second hand market for everything okay. so, and once it's once it's cleaned like they're not good you know what i mean like it's not like I can try, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, all right, I'll give you about one more minute, get this section done, and then we're gonna go over uh, task eight. I think I was more upset about hearing from my husband for two months. I told you, I told you. Because <laughs> he deals with this stuff, I mean, theft all the time. I mean, he's at Target, he said, at least twice a week, you know, or while, I mean, he's at Walmart, like depending where he's patrolling, like, I mean, you know, because there's always theft and I mean, there's always stuff going on and stuff like that. So I get to hear, you know, all the things that go on. And all the things. Well, I have like the 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 track my iPhone, you know, like I have it all in account. So when I got home, I was able like on my iPad, I was able to like see. But then once they turn it off. um, But I've had to use it before, like when anybody else misplaced their cell phone in their house and you can't find it. <laughs> So you have to go to the iPad and make it Bing so you can find it. So I've had to do that before. Maybe a week ago, maybe. Maybe a week ago? <laughs> no, it just sometimes like I get moving around and I don't have like a home phone, you know, so if you misplace it in the house. You know? Yeah. Like, where did I leave it? And then I have it on silent all the time because of like school and, you know, like, so, um, so it doesn't disturb. And then, but if you set it down somewhere. <laughs> it's a wrap. Yep, it's you know, and everybody else is gone. There's no, yeah. Ah. Mm -hmm. So you're like, where's the ting, ting, ting? Okay, number eight. How are we doing? Did we get number five done? That was a little shorter. You got the commentary too while you were working. You're welcome. Thank you very much. <laughs> yep, we're good. Yeah, and like at school, things can get. Yeah, I mean it. Have. I've never, I never had in, in all my years of teaching, I never had anything stolen from my classroom and I didn't keep it locked. I was, that was, you know, and I know that happened to teachers. So I was super fortunate. I, I, you know, so there was really not much to steal. Um, but <laughs> it's my purse, but my Greg, but he canceled it. So I guess probably the most valuable thing would have been the purse itself. But yeah, there wasn't, I never, I never carry cash. So there was never any, nothing really like to get out of it. Okay. Number eight you are going to create a shopping list. Okay, so let's go back into Canvas. Let me go over this. All right, we're gonna skip six and seven for now. We'll do those next week, okay? Um, and we're gonna do number eight. Plan two weeks worth of meals, budget, and buy the appropriate items uh, using one of the online stores. Screenshot your shopping cart and insert it in your Google Doc. Now, you don't have to purchase this. You're just creating like a list as if you're gonna do it, okay? So all of these are popular online. You can shop online 
create a list, okay? And then I'll show you an example, okay? I This is a real life Mrs. Hall snapshot from my Target account, okay? So you're gonna pick one of your favorite stores um, and then you're gonna shop. So you could do it on your computer, you could do it on your, your phone if you want. Um, I just do them through the apps, you know what I mean? All right, so this was my Target shopping list from yesterday. So it's literally what I picked up yesterday. So this is Mrs. Hall's Target haul, no pun intended. So um, I spent $179. And um, I did three screenshots because you couldn't see my whole list. And it's about a week's worth of food. So you can see cheese, lunch meat. Can't tell. Oh, that's the power bars um, or protein bars, bread, apple juice. Can't tell what that is. Cucumbers, cereal. I did another screenshot. I scrolled down. Um, eggs, yogurt. I eat a lot of yogurt. Um, let's see. Um, links, um, couscous, strawberries blackberries there were tangerines um broccoli salad cheese they didn't have my milk yesterday or my raspberries so i had to go buy um i had to go buy bonds on the way home and get those anyone else really particular about their milk like i drink one percent i can't drink skim can't drink two you know has to be can't drink any of it oh or or you just can't drink it so yeah mm -hmm. but it's like if i drink two it, it's like so thick or if i drink skim i'm like it's water so get used to your thing. So you're just creating a sample list. Okay. So kind of what would you shop for? So think breakfast, lunch, dinner. No, you're not going to want to eat the same thing every night. So believe me, you'll have good intentions and then you're going to realize <laughs> this sucks and I can't do this. So create a little variety in your life, right? Everybody, when they move out, they're like, I'm going to eat so cheap and I'm going to be so good. And then you're like, this sucks. None of it. None of it. No. And then you, you need a little variety. Okay. You can't set yourself up for failure. So Make sure you're not eating the same thing more than three nights, okay? Like, you're going to want something else, okay? You can't just be chicken, rice, and beans every night or whatever, you know, and salad. or Like, you're going to want – diversify it, okay? Whatever that is for you, okay? And the idea is to kind of get an estimate of what would that cost you. It ranges for me. So I'm usually between 150 175 This week was a little more expensive because I bought a ton of yogurt and a few other things on – and stuff. So like next week will probably be a little bit lighter. So I'm usually between 150, 175 a week, give or take for groceries. That doesn't include eating out for all of the four of you. That's pretty good. Well, okay. It's a little bit higher. So we do, I, I get meat here and there, and then we do Costco like every other month and we'll buy that in bulk. So, so that will then when we do Costco, that's like a couple hundred dollars when we like stock up on that. So if I broke that down by week, it'd probably be a little bit more. Yeah. So, no, I try to like pre plan meals and we're pretty simple. But even then, you know, holy cow, it's expensive. Mm -hmm. All right. So, take the next 10 minutes. Okay. Create your list. Finish number five if you need to. Otherwise, go ahead and create your list for task eight. Okay. So, pick one of those websites. You could do it on your computer. I know some people's Chromebooks haven't been letting them open that. So, if you need to, maybe on your phone, that might be easier. And then you can just screenshot your phone, right? And then send it to yourself and then put it in the doc. Okay, but make sure you're getting your whole list showing. So if you got to scroll, take another screenshot, scroll, take another screenshot. So you can see I had to do three screenshots to show my whole list. Okay, you don't have to buy it. So I'm not asking you to spend it. It's just, you know, do it for, for example, and then you can take it out of your cart. Okay, just don't check out. But to give you kind of a real life idea, you know. Or if you do the shopping with anybody in your family, I'm sure you get an idea of what that looks like or costs. It can also depend where you shop. I have a friend. She's like exclusively Trader Joe's, Whole Foods. She spends yeah. a lot more food than I do. I tend to be Target Bonds. Some people like Winco, Walmart. You can get better deals. So also sometimes where you shop, that can have a big impact on your budget as well. Walmart. You can spend oh. the lines Walmart. I used, so I did Walmart forever, swore by them, but I was having the worst times with, because I would get it delivered. I just paid the monthly fee. It was like $10 a month and it was like unlimited delivery. Mm -hmm. But literally, I'm not even joking. It was it was like a year into the pandemic. So maybe it's gotten better. Um, it literally, every single one of them got jacked so that they would hire those like Uber drivers <laughs> and they would like, and oh I would never God. get my, so I'd have to contact them and reorder. It was like a thing constantly so i got so mad i just stopped i was like i'm done so i i have nothing against walmart but i personally boycotted boycotted walmart since like it literally and i go what are you going to do about it they're like well we just oh, there's nothing we could do and i'm like that's robbery it's like robbery 
But they didn't double charge you, did they? No, they give you a refund, but it's just so frustrating because like if you need the groceries, you can't yeah, get them until the next day. You know, like the whole point is I was so frustrated and yeah. it happened literally like three or four times. And I was like, that's it. So I have a Vons near me and a, and like we, I go by this target like once or twice a week. So I try to like grocery shop the days we have activities so that like yesterday they had gymnastics while they were in gymnastics. I ran over and got the groceries. And so I just yeah. do that now, but <laughs> No, I, I go, I buy, I still buy a Walmart, Walmart or Walmart or, um, Winco's great. I don't have one near me, but Winco's so good. I try to avoid Sam's club and, and Costco. I said my husband, cause yeah. I buy way too much. Like it, yeah. it's, I can't go in there. Like I yeah. can't, I just, it's, Ooh, Ooh. And I, yeah. Cause everything's fabulous in there. Oh my gosh. So I make a list, like, here's the meat we need. Da, da, da. And I'm like, call me if you see something that you really think I would need. <laughs> but I'm like, here's the budget. And he's better at just sticking to it. So, mm -hmm. and plus he likes the samples. So, <laughs> so. I love Sam's Club, but yeah. Um, I agree. Yeah, One Sam's Club or Costco, they're great. But I, mm -hmm. and actually that's why I like Target Pickup because again, if I don't go in, I just stick to the list. If I go in. There's that dollar to $3 section. Mm-hmm. Oh, I just find, I mean, I always, well, let's just go through the home section. Okay, let's go through the clothes section. And I always oh, yeah. find something. And I, it's stuff I don't need, you know. Oh, yeah. so I do good on the groceries. It's just all the other aisles that oh, yeah. are available <laughs> with amazing things in them. Bought my dog a new collar and a new scarf mm -hmm. for no reason at all. It right? Was just, it was cute or on sale or, yeah. Yeah, and she immediately rips it off. But I, you know, for all of two minutes, I got to look at her look super cute. Right? No, I'm, I just, I have to be good. Cause when I'm not like, even like oh, birthday yeah. presents now, I like order them and pick them up because we go into the toy section and I'm like, ah. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And that's how you ruin your credit. You guys buying random stuff. I'm or so just you. <laughs> overspend. Yeah. Yeah. Don't so, do it. Yeah. I get to deal with people who have bad credit and try to find rentals and it's a nightmare. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. It's hard. A lot of places they'll have like a minimum credit score, right? That they'll require. Or, yeah. or like one lady that I just got in, she had totaled her credit. Her mm -hmm. daughter had good credit. And so we got her into a place, but they charge her an extra $2,500 for her deposit. Who's got that laying around? That's the problem. It's so expensive. Um, it's expensive to have bad credit. It gets really yeah. expensive. Yeah. So none of this negotiating, none of it, none of it happens unless you have mm. perfect credit. Don't well, I think up. that was probably from a few years ago because I don't know anybody that's really negotiating. No, I don't think so either. I think it's rent is, rent is, I mean, it's competitive, right? I mean, it's harder to find, especially that nice, nice, a decent unit or something. Um, they seem to go pretty quick. Everything so. in the nicer areas guaranteed says they want a 640 credit score or higher. Hmm. negotiating isn't really realistic but if you had a snowball's chance it would be with perfect credit yeah and it would be after your first year of the lease when they see that you're a good tenant and well and that's like the tenants we had um they were awesome actually did yeah. not have great credit but um my husband knew one of i don't know some relation or whatever or stuff like that it was it was like a medical bankruptcy right. thing um and stuff like that and they had really good rental history um and stuff so they were great um and then for them to sign the second year like and i was like heck yeah you know like they were you know within reason but it was they were great so it was worth but you said something that really makes sense and i hope you all heard it people are more lenient when it's a medical problem and they can see your credit score and they can see your credit history if they see a medical thing versus seeing a credit card or a pay payday loan is the mark of the devil. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Well, and sometimes if you explain too, like I've had people like explain, you know, like, hey, this isn't good, but this is why. But if you check this and this, and my big thing is more like the rental history, you know, did they, did the last place they lived, did they leave it in good condition and did they pay on time, you know? Yeah, but you're not a corporation and I'm not a corporation. No, no, no. But the corporations won't give you, you the personal. Care. So if you go through a corporation, it is harder because you're just a number versus yeah. when you rent from a smaller. That's true or, too. Um, like a, a mom and pop, yeah. 
it's a little bit, I don't know, easier, but like you can, you can maybe get some help with um, mm -hmm. the more difficult circumstances. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah, my big thing is as long as took care of the unit and paid, you know, didn't destroy things and, you know, paid then, you know, mm -hmm. that's more important. Mm -hmm. I have this older couple right now in our unit and they're so sweet. <laughs> but oh, oh my goodness, every little thing though. <laughs> this doesn't work. I mean, my husband goes over there at least once a month and has to just, you know, because they just are like <laughs> it's just like it's not even things are broken. It's just like, you know, it's just we have people like that and any little thing. We got called one time because there was a person outside with a dog on the skateboard and he was upset. <laughs> what does that have to do with our rental? I get my video camera. I'd be like, let me see that. That's like really cool. He was like, this is a pet violation. I don't, I don't know what to do. It gets that. outside the unit. I don't know what you want me to do. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, this couple is really sweet. They moved from uh, Utah and they like sold their home and their kids are here. So they're they're here and stuff. So they're, they're sweet. So, um, but it's just a little, a little helpless, like, like clueless, helpless, like, oh my goodness. But again, yeah. I'll take it. Like they're sweet, you know, you like, yeah. Get, yeah. Oh yeah. They're, they're, I mean, they're fine, but it's just <laughs> sometimes I get to them. I was like, what now? <laughs> Cause it's just the ice machine. Cause it, it had frozen up. Oh. And I'm like, you try taking it out and like dumping the ice out or something. Oh, I'm like, my yeah. parents have a rental and they literally just went through that and they yes. have to go over there. So I, I get the messages because I'm the translator. Uh, we have to go over there and empty out the ice machine. Yeah, I was like, just take it out. But it's so he yeah. just went over and did it. And then there was something else with oh, the toilet, like the one of the like um, you know, the cord sometimes like it doesn't flush all the way, like the cord can get and you just go and adjust it. It didn't even like need the part replaced, but you know what I mean? Like anyone who's yeah. <laughs> And so that was it, like, it's just not, you know, and it's so he went over and he's like, oh, you just got to reattach the chain. Like, you know, I get if it's broken, like call us, you know, well, but it was just like, yeah. it's like, did you even take off the thing and check no. like before, you know, so mm -hmm. they're sweet. Electrical was out, but really wasn't the electrical was out. The whole neighborhood had a power outage. Oh, and so you said the energy, you don't have to call me at five in the morning. Yeah. Right. You look at your window. If everybody's lights are out, I can't fix this. Yes. Yep. Yep. All right, everybody. We'll start wrapping things up. Um, have you started making your list? So if you need a little bit more time, again, just kind of finish making that list. You know, think breakfast, lunch, dinner. Whenever you do it, pick one of those um, things off the list. Like I said, you know, uh, Vons has an app, Target, Walmart, um, Smith's, Albertsons, like, you know, most of the big chains have a, a, an app. Don't purchase it, but then take those screenshots and then you can insert it there. Okay. Um, for this weekend, so listen, nothing technically due tomorrow, so that's good. Um, but for this weekend, make sure that you have one through five and eight done on this task sheet, right? Because then we're going to continue next week and this stuff is due next week. So you want to make sure that you're with me and you're not behind. Money moves. Remember those three assignments that were due on Tuesday? Get those in if you haven't. And then the ever five financial literacy, the first four are, uh, are due. Okay. Those were due last week. So make sure that if you're behind, if your grade isn't doing well, that you get those done. Also, you can get it. You can study ahead if you want for your final exam. All right. I'll see you on Monday. Have a great weekend. If you need anything, you can message me tomorrow. I will be online. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Owen. Thank you.